One of the most heavily discussed or, well, argued things in the 3D printing industry is open source versus closed source. It often comes down to a discussion of transparency. Prusa Research just released their first annual sustainability report, which includes an incredible amount of transparency. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to be talking all about the Prusa Sustainability Report, which they talked about over a year ago when they first asked the community for some input on this whole idea of being more transparent about the process that it takes to produce the 3D printers and the filament and what the community itself wants to see. Before we get too deep into it, whether you like Prusa or not, whether you think I'm a shill for Prusa or not, hashtag Prusa Mafia, you should know that this level of transparency is good. And regardless of the company behind it, we would be covering this. And if there are other news topics you'd like to see us discuss here on the channel, you can submit them to us, youtube at 3dmusketeers.com. I'll go through them, and hey, if we like them, we'll feature it on the channel, because I would like to really start focusing more on some cool updates in the industry, and stuff like this is really interesting. This entire read, according to the article, is an estimated three minutes, but the sustainability report is three pages shy of nice. And uh, boy, it has a lot of information. Now, stay tuned because this weekend we're going to be going through the sustainability report in a podcast where we're just going to go through it, learn more about it, talk about it, and see what we think. I think you guys will enjoy it. So if you're looking for a more in-depth review of this, we have a podcast coming up this Sunday, and uh, we'll link to it in that description down below when it is ready. But let's focus on the actual review of it. Prusa asked the community what they are looking to see, and we've got three things here. Help us recycle useless prints and leftover filament, with 31.7% of people saying that's what they wanted. Start to offer filament on spools without size, with 15.9%, and raise awareness about printing meaningful things, with 6.8%. I agree with every one of these things. One of the biggest problems in this industry is the amount of waste. Heck, I have almost an entire filament box full of bamboo poop, and that includes how unreliable my machine has been. So if you are running a machine that has little to no issues, you're going to have a ton of those little bamboo poops. And if you're running something like a Prusa MMU or a Voron ERCF or the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder 3D Chameleon, which I really want to take a look at those. We didn't get a chance to interview him at the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest, which we'll card those videos if you want to take a look. But it is something that I would like to see. The big issue with all of these mixing style systems, which is multicolor through a single nozzle, is that you have purge volumes. That's a lot of waste. The industry has kind of come up with some different ways. People like Uncle Jesse have showed you how to melt down your 3D prints, pour them into molds, and get new life out of them as random interesting art deco stuff. But I think some of the coolest things that people are using these for are melting them down into bricks and then putting them on pads in places like community gardens where that kind of stuff is something that somebody has to buy. And if you're going to be throwing it out anyways, let's turn it into something that people can actually use. And this is pretty easy. Just go to your local thrift store or go buy the cheapest toaster oven that you can find that you will never put food in. Please don't put food in it. The big thing is to make sure that you negotiate what materials are what. Your local municipality might offer recycling for certain plastics. So if they do, and you can keep those plastics separate from the ones that they don't accept, that's a great option for you to be able to do recycling. But otherwise, upcycling is kind of one of the ways. A lot of people have talked about the desire to manufacture your own filament. If you guys would like us to do a video on that, I can. We do have a Philostruder from years ago, and while it does work, it's just not all that viable in a mainstream atmosphere, especially when it takes like 48 hours to make a kilo, and it's pretty darn loud the entire time. But if you guys want to see it, we can go through the process. I'm glad that that was the top answer because it is something that I struggle with constantly as someone that does have a lot of failed prints from one specific printer, a lot of support material from all of our printers and the odd fail here or there. And we do keep all of our plastic separated because it does enable us to hopefully get the local municipality to take it. Although often they don't and I have to drive it quite far to find a place that will take things like PETG and PLA. ABS, they'll take no problem, they don't care about. And filament on spools without sides, 
otherwise known as master spools, Prusha has already started that. So if that's your kind of thing, you can go take a look. The pricing is a little bit odd. My preference would have been that we either offer more filament and we keep it at the same price or we do something else because uh, the price is just a little bit lower and so it can confuse people that don't necessarily know what to expect. And I really like this statement from Prusha. And this is the kind of thing that I want to see out of more companies. The aim of the report is not to say that we excel in every aspect of the sustainability topic and that everything we do is the best thing to do. Our goal is to show you where we stand right now, what we're good at, and what we're just beginning with. This is the level of transparency that I love to see from companies. And again, like them or not, I want to see more companies kind of act like Prusha. There are so many 3D printing companies out there that are at least Prusha's size, if not larger. There's no reason they can't be this transparent other than they just don't want to be. We can see that there's some common things that they're looking at. They've broken it down into three letters, E, S, and G. Environment, social, and governance with some things below each that you guys can take a look at. And you know, better understand why they mean what they mean. Where they're even looking at things like ethical behavior, as well as pollution mitigation, water sources, and communities, among others. With their vision of a better world through 3D printing, Prusha is trying to utilize that 3D printing to solve contemporary and social environmental problems. By doing things like allowing large businesses and manufacturers of goods to have certified pages on printables. Companies like Cooler Master, Noctua, Adafruit, these are all places where you can go and get official files from the company themselves. No longer do you have to trust some random person that you find to not give you a crappy STL file. You can get a proper one from the company themselves. And I like that because it basically enables right to repair, which we've talked about in previous episodes. We'll card to it so you guys can take a look because at the end of the day, if you can't repair your stuff, why are we even in this industry to begin with? A lot of us got into it because we like making things and we're probably pretty good at breaking them too. And a 3D printer enables us to break what we make so we can break it again and then make it again. Lather, rinse, and repeat. Through their communications with the community and the surrounding area, Prusha has also developed relationships with larger companies, companies that do things like glass blowing and helping the wounded in the war in Ukraine, helping improve living standards in the Gambia, and supporting handicapped sportsmen, among others. That to me is awesome. Ways that 3D printing can end up in the news media, not for generally the bad reasons that it tends to be these days, because like a lot of us know, there's so much more to 3D printing than the news media shows. And it kind of gives us all a bad rap for the stuff that we do. And a lot of the cool stuff, never the ones that we can talk about. So Prusha has also done a life cycle assessment on the filament itself, getting a better idea of where the carbon dioxide is produced in the process of the filament, but also the MK3S as well. I would love to see something come out for the MK4 because it does certainly look like there's a lot more done, especially in-house at Prusa Research for the Mark IV than there was for previous machines. I'd be really curious to see where its carbon footprint lands versus the previous machines. And because of that, they've not only started to produce a Prusa style master spool, where it includes the center core, but no sides. They've also started utilizing their manufacturing waste to produce new filament that does come at a reduced cost to users. So if you are looking to get some really nice Prusa material, but you're not really willing to swallow the entire cost for a roll of Prusa Mint, the recycled Prusa Mint is a great way to get involved and save a little bit of money in the process. We've talked about it in our business series on the podcast. We'll card to the podcast episode so you guys can take a look, but we talk a lot about these incremental benefits where small changes over time add up to being a much larger change and is often easier to do than one large change happening at once. We can see that over the course of a year, they were able to reduce the packaging dimensions and volume for the Mark 3S by 7%. We're seeing a increase in energy usage because of course new machines, more people and all that, but they've made changes within the company culture to basically create a more green atmosphere or 
Is it orange? As someone that has suffered a work-related injury in my life that has been life-changing, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, I actually talked all about it this past Easter Sunday, which marked three years since my life changed from a pretty debilitating workplace injury. We'll card to it so you guys can take a look. Prusha has had zero, zero work accidents with permanent consequences or fatal injuries. And when you look at some of the machinery that Prusha is using, it won't unalive you. It will hurt the entire time you are being unalived. None of that is fun. But this means that they've implemented proper plans and procedures to make sure that their people are safe. That's a big freaking deal. Now, things like little cuts and scratches, that kind of stuff happens. We can see that there were some accidents that resulted in what they're calling sick leave. I'm just assuming that is leave to rest and recover. We can see in 2021, there were four of those injuries. And in 2022, there were one. Their main injury type is arm injuries, bruises, cuts, and fractured fingers. So remember kids, don't stick your fingies where you wouldn't stick your dinkies. Life advice from 3D Musketeers. This is something that I love. This is further transparency proving that Prusha does have a pretty good product. In 2020, they were almost at 1% warranty issues, which when you consider how many printers are out there that are Prusha's, that's still pretty good. In 2022, they were barely over one quarter of 1%. I think we're running worse than that on our machines for success. But to say that one of every 400 printers out there, let's call it one out of every 300 printers out there, has a warranty problem. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. And I would say a lot of other manufacturers are close to that. I would say Creality does a decent job. Maybe they're not that good. I'd say there's more for them. I would think that Bamboo's probably relatively close to that too but we don't know. This level of transparency is not required at all, but it is so great to see. This to me furthers the commitment to open source, but there are still some steps to do for Prusha to be that fully open source. If you guys want me to talk about that, I'm happy to. I've been wanting to talk with Scotty from Marlin for a while, and that might be the impetus that we need. So if that's something you guys want to see, let me know in those comments below. And hey, when you're down there, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like on this video. It costs you nothing and it helps the channel grow. We would greatly appreciate it. And if you do want to support us, there is Patreon, PayPal, and YouTube channel members for as little as $1 a month that supports the channel in allowing us to grow, get better cameras, and make cooler content for you guys more days a week. I like that Prusha is being transparent and that they're very clear of the fact that they are not perfect. They are not going to be perfect, but they're doing everything they can to make steps in the right directions when and where possible. One of the big ones to me is the last thing on this list. We're trying to be transparent when talking about sustainability. For example, we stop labeling PLA as biodegradable because it's not. I mean, technically, Everything is biodegradable given enough time. But unless PLA is in perfect circumstances, under pressure for a couple of years, it does not biodegrade in any meaningful way. And with people talking about how PLA, you can just bury it out in your backyard and it goes away, it doesn't. You can try it, it doesn't. Heck, a couple of other content creators have tried it and it didn't go away. In fact, it barely had any change to it at all. I like that they're doing that. And they're even addressing the social environmental aspects of their production with their largest suppliers because it starts at the top and has a bit of a trickle down effect. And if you can start this process in other companies as well and show them what transparency looks like, we can move toward a better, greener or more orange future overall. And we're going to link to both the blog post as well as the entire document, 66 pages worth of it. And if you guys want to read through it, go ahead. But remember this coming weekend, we're going to be talking all about it live on the podcast. So join in the talk and uh, we'll have some fun. And if I can convince some people from Prusa Research to join us, maybe we'll have some special guests as well. Because to me, this is all about educating other companies about how they can also do better. And at the same time, showing what a company is capable of doing when it comes to being socially responsible. Let me know what you guys think in those comments below regarding sustainability and Prusa's release of it. I know they didn't really address the big issue regarding print recyclability. I know they're working on it. 
and I'm certain that they're working on it, but it's not exactly something that is the easiest thing to tackle. It really will vary based on your municipality, where you live, and what your local laws and regulations are. I would say maybe some updates on that coming soon, TM. But I'd love to know your thoughts down below. That's all we have for you guys today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. All the prints are orange. And the sky is, I don't know. It'd be, it'd be, fuck. What? I'm fired? I want to say thank you guys for getting this far in the video. I know that a lot of people think that I'm a crazy, hardcore Prusa fanboy and even a Prusa shill. And it's videos like this that I really don't think help that reputation out at all. But I'm really proud of Prusa and I am willing to call them out on their beef too. I hope that you guys saw that in this video. And if you didn't, I'd love to know. Obviously, this is not a sponsored video. I'm doing this because I really didn't know what else to talk about this week. I'm going through some tough times trying to figure out what to film, but it is really just trying to highlight the good in this industry. And this to me is a great thing in the industry that I would love to see from other companies. I don't know what we can do to look at getting other companies to look at sustainability reports like this, but hey, asking is a great place to start. Anyways, a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon, PayPal, and YouTube channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you all for what you do in making this stuff possible. If you do want to support us financially, links are in that description down below. We would greatly appreciate it if you do think that we earned it. Right below me will be a couple of random videos that you might enjoy. Click on both of them. Let me know your thoughts down in those comments, but I will see you in these comments and in the next video. Take care.